All right, guys, what's going on? Will Reichling here, the Home My Helmet Football Podcast. Brandon IU, Contract Disputes, Pittsburgh, agreeing with the trade offer with the Niners. We'll get into that in a little bit because it still technically has not fully gone through. So we'll get into the Brandon IU dilemma. Patriots were after him, the Browns were after him, Commanders at one point were interested. A lot of drama this offseason with Brandon IU. A lot of drama with the San Francisco 49ers. We'll get into to all of that in a little bit. We will also get into preseason week one. All these rookie quarterbacks, how did they do? How did they perform? They look very strong, very capable of coming in to the NFL and being effective very immediately. All majority of them do. So like, subscribe, share, keep giving me support, and let's do this. Let's go. So, since the beginning of the offseason, we've heard that Brandon Ayuk has wanted a contract extension pretty much since, I mean, the end of last season. We, we knew that this was going to be a lingering thing where he, after putting up a big season, going into his fifth season and final season on this contract, we knew he was going to want a new deal, obviously. Um, he put up 1,400 yards last season. I know he didn't have a lot of catches, but he had a lot of yards per reception. Uh, got a lot of yards after the catch. He's a great route runner. I mean, he's the best route runner on the Niners. I think Debo's elite, but I think Brandon Ayuk's the best route runner on the team. Um, he put up big numbers. He finally showed why he was worth a first-round pick. Initially, we heard that the Browns, Patriots, Steelers, Commanders were interested. Cleveland Browns offered Amari Cooper a second and a third-round pick for Brandon Ayuk. The 49ers accepted that, but Brandon Ayuk did not want to go there, apparently, so he uh, declined the contract offer from the Browns, so that kind of fell through. The, that, that fell through. If I was honest, I would have absolutely taken that, too. I think Brandon Ayuk and Amari Cooper are almost a similar type of player. I think Amari Cooper is just as good as Brandon Ayuk, if not better. I mean, he put up 1,100 yards last season, uh, had some elite games with a rev- revolving door quarterback. What did he have? 12, oh, sorry. He had 1,250 yards with a revolving door quarterback. So Amari Cooper has been reliable. You saw in Dallas, too. He's also one of the best route runners in the league. I think Ayuk and Amari Cooper, toe for toe, they probably are like both top five in the league as far as route running. I get... The Browns wanted to go get Brandon Ayuk. He's younger. You know, you kind of want to reset thinking into the future. I get it. But if I was the Browns, I'd be a little pissed. The Niners, I guess the Niners leaked out that they had the trade for Amari Cooper to uh, for Brandon Ayuk. And I know the Browns wouldn't leak that because Amari Cooper's still on the team. So if I was the Browns, I'd be a little pissed right now because now it's like, hey, Amari Cooper's still on the team. He's still going to play for us next season. So now Amari Cooper's unhappy. You saw the Instagram story where he was like, I wouldn't mind that at all. Um, LOL, I wouldn't mind that at all. So I have to add in the LOL, right? So yeah, I would be pissed at the Niners if I was the Browns for that. They leaked information on a trade that was agreed to, and then Ayuk uh, vetoed it pretty much due to the fact that Cleveland wasn't one of his preferred destinations, quote-unquote, from what the story that I found. Imagine your significant other looking for other dating partners and then going back to you like nothing happened. So pretty much the Browns were willing to trade Amari Cooper for Brandon Ayuk and also a second and a third. So Amari Cooper's like, you traded me a second and a third for Brandon Ayuk, so I'm not worth Brandon Ayuk straight up. I'm a second and a third. But you also have to remember, the Browns were going to have to trade Brandon Ayuk on top of that. So they had to trade for Brandon Ayuk, give up a second, a third, and Amari Cooper, and then they had to pay Brandon Ayuk. So on top, like, if I was Amari Cooper, I'd be pissed. I'm like, I'm worth... Less than Brandon Ayuk, plus draft picks. So if I was Mark Cooper, I'd be a little annoyed right now. So imagine you going to look for other dating partners while you're dating a significant other, and you find four or five different significant others that you think are better. And then after they don't want you, you're like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. I'll stay with you. Hell no. I'd be like, get the hell out of here. What the hell is going on here? So if you have any self-respect, which Amari Cooper obviously has, he would be pissed. And I get why he's pissed. But he's a professional. He's going to come back next year. He loves his teammates probably. I mean, it's going to be water under the bridge probably. He's going to play this final season out on his contract. And we'll see where it goes from there. So the Browns are out. New England Patriots. They offered him. Apparently, they topped $30 million per year. In the contract offer the Brandon Ayuk, he turned that down. We all know why. The Patriots suck. They don't have a quarterback. I absolutely agree with that. If I was Brandon Ayuk, I would have done the same thing too. If you're going to go to a team, the Browns are somewhat interesting, but he turned that down too. The Steelers, who I'm about to get into, somewhat interesting too, but the Patriots, not interesting at all. They Any offensive talent that goes there, they end up dying. You know, Juju smith Schuster was just released. Um, Kendrick Bourne, we haven't heard anything from him. Uh, Hunter Henry was probably the only person there that had some slight production. Jasicki went there and completely sucked. Uh, Devontae Parker, he's kind of sucked since he's went there. So it seems like it's a black hole for wide receivers and weapons in New England, for sure. I mean, Belichick's out of there now, so it might be slightly different. But I got to be honest, if I was Ayuk, I would have done the same exact thing. I'd be like, in New England? No. Please, they're in a long rebuilding phase right now. So, if I was Ayuk, that you probably 
like New England's a black hole. So yeah, you they offered you the most money, but like you have to balance out money versus situation. Okay, Boston, the taxes are pretty high there too. It's not like it's like Texas or Florida. The taxes are fairly high too. So it's not like it's like he's still going to be paying a lot in taxes, and he's not going to be the same player that he is in San Francisco. Let's be honest. So Patriots out too. Then come the Pittsburgh Steelers. So apparently, as of you know today, the 49ers and Steelers have agreed to terms of a trade, and the Steelers are apparently now in a good place with Ayuk on a contract. So, the report said the deal will be done once the 49ers sign off on it. Apparently, the 49ers also offered a long-term deal to Ayuk, and obviously he hasn't accepted. So, clearly, the Niners haven't offered him what he wanted yet, but I guess they're both in damage control right now. I don't know if Ayuk necessarily agreed to the contract the Steelers gave him, but apparently, I guess he's willing to probably agree to it. So, I guess Ayuk's on board, and it's up to the Niners now, but now the Niners are having second th- like second thoughts. Are you sure you want to go? Are you sure you don't want to stay here? So, the Niners completely botched this, let's be honest. And you also have Trent Williams that needs a contract extension. This is getting kind of out of control right now with the Niners. And for a team that just got out of the Super Bowl, that's Probably the favorite in the NFC to go back to the Super Bowl. I've never seen so much drama in the offseason for one team. And the odds are they're probably going to be just fine. We will probably forget about this once the season starts. I think Ayuk, his best option, stay with the Niners. But at this point, is the bridge burned? Is the bridge burned at this point? I don't know. I really honestly don't know. But, you know, a lot of wide receivers go to different teams after being with star quarterbacks and they're never the same. Remember, Deion Branch, the Super Bowl MVP with Tom Brady, goes to the Seahawks. You don't even hear it from him again. Comes back to the Patriots. He starts to go off again. Randy Moss going to the Raiders. Yes, he was productive, but you didn't really hear anything from him. Almost was a black hole. T- came back to the Patriots with Tom Brady. Then, you know, Wes Welker, one of, an all- one of the all-time greats with Tom Brady and the Patriots, goes to the Broncos, Peyton Manning, you think he's going to have the same production, falls off a cliff. A lot of wide receivers like that. They go to the uh, wrong team, wrong fit, wrong situation, uh, not good enough quarterback play, and they're not the same wide receiver. Will that happen here if Brandon Ayuk goes to the Steelers? Look, they got Justin Fields, they got Russell Wilson. I watched that preseason game with Justin Fields. He's making the same mistakes he did in Chicago. You know, uh, Kind of waiting too long in the pocket, taking sacks, um, not seeing the f- just not seeing the field. Him and Zach Wilson have very similar traits where they just don't see it quick enough. It's still happening in the preseason. If that's happening in the preseason, it's probably gonna happen in the regular season. You look at Bo Nix in the preseason, which we'll get into later. Looked very much in control, knew where to go with the football. Justin Fields, you feel like something slightly off with his decision making. If you're Brandon Ayuk, do you really want to go there? And Russell Wilson, who you know, all you hear from his teammates are just. I never hear positive things from a teammate. Apparently, he's close with Mike Tomlin. I, I, I don't see him being close with teammates. So, if you're right, do you really want to go there to a team that doesn't really have the quarterback situation figured out? Or do you want to stay on the 49ers where Brock Purdy, who was in the MVP race last year, has statistical records uh, for a quarterback up to this point? A lot of people will say that it's because of the Avengers. McCaffrey, Debo, Kittle, Ayuk too. But Brock Purdy's putting up numbers since he's been there. He knows how to get the ball to Ayuk. Remember when Debo was out, Ayuk was like good old reliable for Purdy in those situations. That Browns game on that final drive, Ayuk made some big catches to get him in field goal position, and then Jake Elliott missed the field goal. But Brandon Ayuk is key. Like Brock Purdy and Brandon Ayuk have chemistry. So would you take three million off your contract for chemistry? I don't know. It seems like Ayuk wants to be paid, paid. But like. I wonder what the Niners are really offering him. Like, if they're offering him 23, I get Ayuk being disrespected. But if they're offering him, like, 27, 28, I would just take that. I would take that because you ha- you're you going to— I think the Niners, at one point, will get to a Super Bowl and win it. And do you want to be part of that or not? It really, it really comes down to that. Do you want your legacy to be set now? He's been very popular within the Niner community, too. So do you really want to, like, leave that to go to a cold place in New England or Pittsburgh where Mike Tomlin might be out after this season? By the time this video comes out, because I— I'm filming this Tuesday night, and I usually don't post till Wednesday afternoon. So by Wednesday afternoon, this could have happened. But this is how my stance is right now. Like the trade could have happened at this point when this video comes out. But I would say a Niner if I was Ayuk, and apparently he's ready to go. I guess because they're cl- they they feel the Steelers feel good about a deal with Ayuk. Well, maybe it's Ayuk who's having second thoughts. I don't know because if Ayuk's negotiating with the Niners right now for a contract, maybe Ayuk and the Niners both really deep down feel like they want to stay together. They just want to work on a number. So at the end of the day, I do think Ayuk stays a Niner. I do. And I do think he wants to be a Niner. I think the best interest for him is to be a Niner. And the best interest for the Niners is to keep Ayuk. Pearsall has some injuries in the offseason so far. Um, and we don't know what he's going to be. He's not proven. Kittle's getting older. He had a big year last year, but he's getting older. Debo has been inconsistent since he's gotten paid. So Ayuk's really reliable right now in this offense. I get that the, 
Kyle Shanahan is a run first offense, but Brandon Ayuk is your best route runner, and we don't know if Pearsall's going to turn out how we think he's going to be. So Ayuk's valuable, and if you want to win the Super Bowl this year, you want Ayuk on your team. So I think this deal gets done between Ayuk and the Niners. I really think this is just kind of a bluff situation, almost like Lamar last year. But apparently things are getting done, so it's a little scary. There's chaos here. It's been chaos for sure. Now for preseason week one. And let's start with Caleb Williams. If I'm a Chicago Bear fan, I'd be really excited about Caleb Williams. I mean, we all know he can make the wild plays, moving out of the pocket, making big throws on the run, big arm, uh, sidearm throws like Mahomes. But he showed good pocket presence too. He showed that he can make throws in the pocket too. I know it's preseason. He's going against backups, backups to backups. I understand that. But third and 12, a completion to DJ Moore on the curl route, you know, waiting for him to come back to the ball, standing in there, uh, waiting, waiting and timing it perfectly to DJ Moore. I like that from Caleb Williams. I'm sorry. Like, he showed that he can th- make throws in the pocket, too, because that was his big knock is that he doesn't really take what's given to him. He took what's given to him. You saw him make screen passes. He didn't he rolled out made a little uh, dump down throw on the drag route to the tight end. He did what he had to do as far as the open guy. I'm going to hit the open guy. He didn't pass on throws. But when he had to move out of the pocket, yes, you saw that the guy was special. That sideline throw the cold commit rolling out not every quarterback can make that i'm just gonna be honest i know it's preseason i know it's backups to backups i keep saying that but there's some throws you see and you don't really care who's around him as far as talent and you're just like wow not everyone can make that throw i know zach wilson showed you that too a little bit but this guy has made enough wow plays in his college career and now what you're seeing in the nfl that i think it's going to translate i think him and michael Penix and bo Nix are probably the three most polished quarterbacks but i think he's extremely polished i know people said he got a little he got a little happy feet uh in college and kind of like ha- like the roll out a lot but you saw him take what was given to him in this preseason game so maybe the nfl is teaching him to take what's given uh he slid on that third down where he took off for a run he did everything you like out of an nfl quarterback he kind of contained himself made wild plays when he had to but he really controlled the offense and like you gotta like what you saw of Caleb Williams so you're a Bears fan he didn't force a bad throw either. And, you know, sometimes in college he would do that, trying to make the big play, trying to be the hero because, you know, USC had a terrible defense, terrible offensive line. So you try to bring him back in games, keep him within games, be the hero, and it didn't always work out for him. You didn't see that there. You saw him take what was given, and when he had to make a play or two out of the pocket, he did it. So, and then when you saw, when he had to make a throw on third down in the red zone, but... He did, it would have been critical for him to turn the ball over in that situation. Say it's a regular season game. You're in the red zone. You do not want to turn the ball over. You either want to come, come up with three or with seven. He just threw the ball out of the back of the end zone. He didn't force a throw into double coverage. He just rolled out, didn't see anything there, threw it out of the back of the end zone. That's what you want to see from your quarterback. I'm sorry. It's the little things like that that show that the guy's going to translate. Caleb Williams is going to be a decent quarterback in this league. He's going to be a starter. Is he going to be great, special? I don't know. But he's going to translate. He's going to be an effective starter. So he's... The Bears have a shot here. They have talent. All he has to do is play within himself. He doesn't have to go out there and wow everyone. DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Cole, Cole Komet, Roma Dunze, DeAndre Swift, a good defense with Montez Sweat, who they traded for, Jalen Johnson being hated out of the top 10. There's te- there's people and talent on this team. And Ibu Flus looks like a good uh, defensive head coach. So there's a lot to like here with Caleb Williams. And get the Bears fans being excited for sure. The one I really want to talk about is Bo Nix. Bo and Nick's really impressed me. I know, again, preseason, backups, I understand. But he's got some really good footwork on the pocket. He looks really comfortable in the pocket with his pocket presence. He knows how to slide up. He's got quick feet, very quick feet in the pocket. He made a great throw running to his left on third down to Cortland Sutton. And you like to see that rolling left, uh, you're off side and making that throw off balance. Like, he did that with ease. He really did. He even threw a great fade to Reynolds in the end zone, which he dropped. So, I mean, he showed that he could make the fades, he made the sideline throws, he could make middle throws. He really did a lot in that preseason. It was pretty impressive. Um, and he had a couple of good effective runs, too. He showed that his running translates to the NFL as well. Again, backups, but he did it with ease. He was basically, it looked like he was jogging out there and he was running past defensive players. So, very quick decision-making, gets the ball out of his hands quick. This is exactly what Sean Payton wanted. He wanted a Taysom Hill that could throw the ball. Pretty much a Taysom Hill with a better arm and more accuracy. That's what Bo Nix is. He's not Taysom Hill running players over and everything, but he can move. He can make throws out of the pocket. He's accurate, quick, gets the ball out of his hands, knows how to read a defense. He's exactly he's Drew Brees when he was younger and a little lesser. I guess a kind of poor man's Drew Brees because you can't like compare him to Drew Brees yet. Almost like a poor man's Drew Brees, a little more athletic. I know Drew Brees was athletic when he was younger. But that's kind of what he looked like here. And... I don't want to get ahead of myself, 
but his arm is way stronger than I thought. Like, he had some zip on the ball. Like, I thought his arm was, like, they had made a lot of, at Oregon, they made a lot of passes at the line of scrimmage or, like, within five yards. So, didn't really know. You thought either he was limited or it was just Oregon's offense. You see that he can make plays down the field. He can play, make plays moving out. He can run. And with Sean Payton as his head coach, is that the question that Bo Nix could win Rookie of the Year? I'm not sure because I don't want to go that far yet because the Broncos, look, they don't have great talent on that team, but they have decent pieces. And if Sean Payton could be what Sean Payton was in the Saints, he's a smart offensive guy. He knows offense. And it seems like Bo Nix is what he wanted. And Russell Wilson wasn't. Russell Wilson doesn't really see the field well. He's shorter. You know, he's just not a great thrower from the pocket. He's got to move around, kind of ad lib a little bit. That's not what Sean Payton wants. Yes, Bo Nix can do that when he has to. But Bo Nix is quick in the pocket. He sees what he wants, and he gets the ball out. He catches throws. You saw on that touchdown pass. Fake, throw, touchdown. He's quick. That's what Sean Payton wants. Quick. And if you don't see, take off. Go. Run. Russell Wilson was too much of like, hold the ball, hold the ball, hold the ball. Up. Oh, maybe I'll move over here. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, now I'm sacked. Russell Wilson took a lot of sacks. So this is definitely, if you're a Broncos fan, also should be very excited. I mean, Bo Nix really, really impressed me in that game. I thought he was the worst quarterback out of the six the big six coming out of this draft he could potentially be the best one this season and i heard a lot of analysts say that coward uh middle cough you know nick right there's a lot of analysts that have said bo nicks could be very effective in this first season i didn't really buy it i was like you know bo nicks is average at best he had to go through six college seasons to have a good decent season maybe the college all those bad experience same with Penix. Uh, affected him positively. Obviously, it's a good effect on him, but it seems like it really got him ready for the NFL. And this is exactly what Sean Payton wants. So, Bo Nix is ready to play. Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels had a really good, impressive one drive in the preseason, too. He overthrew a screen, so you saw a little jitters initially, but complete dot. Complete dot on the throw to Brown uh, down the sideline. So, absolutely beautiful throw. Nice rushing touchdown on the read option, too. You see his running also translate. He looks a little thin. Looks a little thin for my liking. Didn't really see much there, but it looks like he's going to translate, too. It looks like he has all the tools you want, too. Uh, you know, not as much as Bo Nix I saw there, because it, he didn't play as much, let's be honest. He... I do think Jaden Daniels probably is more talent. Well, he definitely is more talented, and he's probably better than Bo Nix. But you know, this is kind of a rebuilding process with the new ownership, uh, new front office. You got a, new, a lot of new pieces in there, so I do understand a little bit of rebuild, a little bit of a progression period. I don't think he's going to go out there right now and like the uh, commander's going to make the playoffs and he's going to be rookie of the year. I know a lot of people think he will be a dark horse rookie of the year, but I actually think Bo Nix has more of a chance to be rookie of the year than Jaden Daniels. You have a defensive head coach. Cliff Kingsbury has had some success in the NFL, but also has had some struggles. So, I mean, I could see some give and take there. Terry McLaurin's great on the outside. You have a decent tight end, I guess. They still have Logan Thomas. I'm not sure there. Um, running back's okay with Robinson. It's not like they have great, great talent, but they're okay. I could see them being better than the Giants, but I don't see them making a playoff push yet, but you, you saw confidence from Jaden Daniels. He could make big-time throws. Uh, he probably makes more big-time throws than Bonex. so yeah, I do think Jaden Daniels probably will be better, but Look, Bo Nix, offensive head coach, exactly what fits that system. I do think Bo Nix has potential to be like, you know, some kind of diamond in the rough here. But, you know, come back to Earth eventually a couple of years from now. But initially this first season, Bo Nix might be the guy to surprise. Jaden Daniels, I think we it might be like Kyler Murray's first season. You know, 5-11, and 11, well now there's 17 games, 5-12, and 12, some decent performances. You don't watch them a lot because they're not on national TV and they're not the 4 o'clock slot, they're probably more the 1 o'clock slot, but him going out there and making plays and people being like, this guy Jaden Daniels, the commanders are spicy and they're competitive for sure. So Jaden Daniels, I think it's going to be a decent year for him. 20 touchdown passes, you know, but like I think there's going to be some struggles here and there, but I think there's going to be a lot of promise too. This is a very strong class for sure. And, you know, Jason McCarthy shows again, this class is actually really strong. Now, Recent news, torn meniscus, he's going to need surgery. The length of the recovery will be, will be determined at the time of the operation. So we don't know if he's going to be out for months or just a month. I don't know. But I did think Sam Darnold was going to start anyway regardless. Um, but it is a little disappointing if you're a Viking fan. You know, you saw a lot in that game. He had a nice zip on the ball. You know, you heard he had a strong arm. You didn't see it a lot at, at uh, Michigan. You know, second half of the Penn State game, he, bit, he didn't even throw the ball. But he had some nice zip on the ball. His eyes stayed down the field. He made a nice throw while taking a hit. Uh, nice deep throw touchdown pass, too. I mean, everyone saw that on Instagram and the highlights. Very strong preseason debut. The, getting injured is definitely going to set back his progression slightly. I don't really know how much because I didn't really think he was going to start at, off the bat anyway. I know Kevin O'Connell o- o- likes Sam Darnold, so they were going to go with him anyway. This makes the decision a little bit easier because McCarthy showed promise. The little spin move for the run. 
look, he impressed me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. But again, it's backups to backups to backups. But it looks like this might be the most polished quarterback class coming out of the draft ever. Really ever. So it's very interesting here. I did like what I saw from J.J. McCarthy. He was kind of the one that was the lowest on coming out of the draft, other than Bo Nix. Like, I didn't think, I thought the hype on him was unwarranted. But I see why people drafted him high. I see why he was a first-round pick. He's got a nice zip on the ball. He has kind of a little bit of wow on him. You see him roll out and make plays. Like, he can move, too. So, and Kevin O'Connell, offensive head coach, is kind of the same situation as Sean Payton and Bo Nix. You're going to have an offensive head coach. You have Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, Aaron Jones. You have talent there. I'm actually talking myself into it as we speak. So, J.J. McCarthy, I guess, you know, the way he plays, it could translate. I'm actually really bullish on a lot of these quarterbacks. But, again, preseason, I'm probably over-exaggerating. You know, we haven't seen football in a long time. It's been a long time since there's been some football. So, I mean, I... Uh, I guess I need to just wait till the regular season happens before I start announcing people to be everyone on this list to be uh, rookie of the year and MVP. So I'll try try to dial it back. But McCarthy also impressed. So it's you know another one that Michael Penix, extreme accuracy, knows how to read a defense, goes through his progression, great footwork in the pocket, very similar to Bo Nix, experience, accurate, like. It's a, all, all these quarterbacks have been translating so far. Like you know. We'll get into Drake Mayne a little bit. I guess Drake Mayne's kind of the exclusion here. Penix showed very calm uh, presence in the pocket, read through his progressions very quickly. I thought he was the most NFL-ready quarterback coming out of the draft other than Caleb Williams, and he, he's showing that too. He's going to sit unless Cousins, you know, Cousins is going to come back soon and he's going to sit. So he showed everything I was talking about in my uh, whole draft analysis of Michael Penix. He didn't, nothing surprised me at all Michael Penix. He played exactly how I thought he would. He's very calm in the pocket. He's a pocket quarterback and he's got great footwork as well. Steps up very smoothly, doesn't let the pressure uh, get to him, and he makes quick throws too sometimes, but he also goes through his progressions, looks at one guy, looks at the other guy. Sometimes we'll stare one guy down and force a throw, but again, preseason, you're trying to execute on your main target. So this quarterback class might be the strongest ever, you know, could be the weakest ever. We really don't know yet. This is preseason games. These are backups. I mean, you have some starters out there, I guess, some role players, but it, it showed promise, but like they have the whole Falcon situation. Do you really want to be a backup if you're Michael Penix? You look like you're ready to play now. So yeah, if you're Penix, I'd be pretty pissed that you can't play right away. The last thing I want to get into is Drake May. They barely even let him play. He made like three throws, and then they had Joe Milton play more. I was getting a little skeptical. I, you know, I was kind of saying everyone was full of shit when they were like, oh, Joe Milton's looking better in practice. Joe Milton's looking better than Drake May. I'm like, yeah, okay. Joe Milton can complete an accurate pass in college. Guy's got a wow arm and can move. Joe Milton, but the accuracy is kind of lacking, but maybe his skills translate more at the NFL level. I'm starting to be convinced that maybe Joe Milton is the guy that the Patriots like a little more. It's kind of scary to think about that, but Drake May, I mean, you can't, rookie quarterback, third overall pick. Don't you want to see more of what he's got? It's, like, it's almost like they were scared to show him screw up in a preseason game. They were almost scared to have him embarrass himself in a way. So if you're that scared of his embarrassment, clearly he's not ready to start now, but I'm still hopeful with Drake May. I had him listed as my second most talented quarterback coming out of this class. You know, he's got made it, he's got all the tools you want. But it seems like he's almost like Zach Wilson not reading it quick enough at the NFL level. I can't even say that yet because I've seen him make he made three throws and most of them were screen throws. So I'm not out on Drake May just yet, but I'm a little bit worried. That's all I'm gonna say. Joe Milton looks like the more talented player and looks like he could translate more at the NFL level. I mean as of right now. I mean again preseason I'm sure Drake May is the better player. I'm sure, you know, 10 weeks from now, we're not even going to be thinking about this, but could be wrong, so. 